This is a weapon that can do much more than its size suggests. This one saw extensive use in Afghanistan and Iraq. Before that, it served in every major American conflict since the Vietnam War. Some troops call it the platoon leader's artillery. This is military mechanics, and today we will look at the M203 grenade launcher. Improved grenade launchers like the American M7, designed to attach to the end of the M1 Garand, were used during World War II and the Korean War. In 1961, the US Army began fielding the M79 grenade launcher. Rather than an attachment fixed to the muzzle of a rifle, the M79 was a standalone weapon. In May 1963, the US military called for a new underslung grenade launcher to complement the AR-15. Colt's design was extensively tested between 1965 and 1967 under the designation XM-148. And despite having almost 28,000 of them manufactured, the government, after some field trials in Vietnam, decided, nope, this is shit. Let's start from the beginning. So they instituted a replacement program called the Grenade Launcher Attachment Development Program in 1967 to come up with something better. Three of the seven different grenade launchers that were proposed received development contracts. Those were the designs of AAI's Philco in cooperation with the Ford Motor Company and the Aerojet Company. But after some development work, AAI's was found to be the best. The gun received its designation M203 in November 68, and by 69 it was in production. However, the problem was AAI lacked the manufacturing capacity to make these in the quantities that the army needed. So Colts, whose own design had failed in the testing, ended up being licensed to produce the M203. M203 uses a high-low propulsion system to fire a 40 mm round. The firing pin strikes the primer whose flash ignites the propellant in the brass powder charge cup inside the high pressure chamber. The burning propellant produces 35,000 psi chamber pressure which ruptures the brass powder charge cup at the vent holes and allows the gases to escape to the low pressure chamber in the cartridge case. There, the pressure drops to 3,000 psi and propels the grenade from the muzzle at a velocity of 250 fps. The grenade's 37,000 rpm right-hand spin stabilizes it during flight and applies enough rotational force to arm the fuse. The weapon is unloaded with the barrel open and fired from a closed bolt. It must be cocked before it can be placed on safe. There were a number of different types of ammunition used with M203. The most common round was the standard HE. As with all things, the M203 is a bit of a trade-off. For example, the M203 makes whichever weapon it's attached to three and a half pounds heavier. Furthermore, if it misfires, the operator has to open the breech and manually spin the grenade before attempting to fire again. It does not quite have the practical range or quite as much muzzle velocity as the M79 standalone grenade launcher, but having an M203 allows you to combine two weapons into one platform. M203 has a maximum theoretical range of about 1,640 feet, but for practical purposes, 975 feet to 1,150 feet is about your maximum range. The M203 grenade launcher had a very long and very successful service life, but consequently, it has become more or less obsolete in the US Armed Forces. The M320 that's been adopted has a number of improvements over it. 
It is a standalone weapon rather than an attachment and has better sights. The M320 is double action, meaning in case of a misfire, the operator simply pulls the trigger a second time without having to handle the grenade. Will this weapon be able to continue the legacy of the 40 Mike Mike? Only time will tell.